Zoroark Glissopod, Zoroark Lycanroc. He's played all sorts of different uh, trade-based decks. He's actually going for something different today, so it's going to be interesting to see how he or why he chose to pay, play a different deck in the first place and uh, how he tries to play the deck himself. Indeed, yeah. I think the big buzz coming into the weekend was Pikachu and Zekrom GX, the new tag team. It just seemed like the most powerful card to come out of Sun and Moon team up. And it seems like a large majority of the field here has decided to try to counter it instead of play it. And that'll create a pretty interesting tournament dynamic as we progress and see which decks are winning. But yeah, both these players are actually going with Malamar. Yeah. Uh, a deck that, oh my goodness, look at those prize cards. <laughs> <laughs> Straight away, we see a lot of supporter cards in the prize cards. Ooh. Two Guzma, that can be big if there are players like Dawnwings, Necrozma GX attacks coming into the game at any point. You need to have Guzma at the right moments. And uh, in a mirror match where they're both playing Ultra Necrozma, trying to take those two prize knockouts is always going to be a big deal when for the majority of the game, it's going to be Giratina versus Giratina. Yeah, and there we do see prize cards for Brent. See that Marshadow GX? He probably doesn't care. That's in the prize cards. Not something you want to play in the mirror match. And then Tapu Lele GX. He only plays one, yeah. so that could be a pretty big deal. And he doesn't play um, the Let Loose Marshadow either. So if he's got nothing but Bull Search in his opening hand, no physical supporter, he's going to be reliant on using something like Jirachi instead of just getting a Tapu Lele to grab himself an early Lily, for example, or any other supporter. Yeah, and we do see in those prize cards uh, two brand new cards from that Team Up expansion. In Connor's prize cards, we saw the Erica's Hospitality, which is a throwback to an older card, Steven's Advice. And then we see Jirachi and Brent's prize cards. But here we go. Handshake, and we are kicking off round one here from the Oceania International Championships. And looks like Connor is going to start things off with a mysterious treasure. It's discarding a psychic energy. Always what you want to see early on. Getting those psychic energies in the discard pile is the perfect synergy for the Malamar deck because the psychic recharge ability is how you're going to try and function and make sure you can get some high energy attack cost Pokemon into the game to use big attacks. Yeah, mysterious treasure is basically tailor-made for this deck. Uh, I can search for either Psychic or Dragon-type Pokemon, so you can get your Malamar, you can get your Ultra Necrozma GX. Uh, it's it's basically better than Ultra Ball in this deck. You only have to discard one card. Yeah, um, but you still get that synergy. Getting those Psychic energies are still important. So we are going to see him just go ahead and grab himself another NK. Normally trying to get multiple of these down is your early priority. He's also got himself a Giratina in his hand. Uh, there's also a Lily in there as well, so he's got plenty of options this turn one. Yeah, great start for Connor so far. That's exactly what you want to do in your first turn. Play down as many cards as you can, and then Lily, fill your hand up to eight cards. Hopefully play a couple more, and then we'll see if he wants to start off with that Marshadow let loose in his hand. Yeah, uh, I mean, he's, he's already got a really nice hand for turn two as well, because he's holding on to more Mysterious Treasures, more energy cards that he could commit to the board turn one. Obviously... Yeah. So far, he's only seen a Jirachi from Brent, so he doesn't really know what he needs to get out in terms of attackers. So he's gone cautious and just got a Giratina because it's a non-GX. It can be good in most situations. But you can see he's holding on to cards like <laughs> Metal Energy, Beast Energy, because he might need to commit them to other attackers if Brent's playing. You know, there's a multiple amount of decks he could be playing with Jirachi in there. So he's trying to just hedge a little bit right now. But here we go. Turn oh, one, Marshadow. All right, and this has uh, become a standard in the standard format. You know, you try to play out as many cards as you can, and then you let loose, try to disrupt your opponent's hand before they get a chance to set up. Um, fortunately for Brent, he did start with that Jirachi, so it'll ease that blow a little bit, but still it hurts to uh, start the game with four cards in your hand. And not ideal, but Connor, as you said, he's already got himself, you know, the Yin K's down. He's just uh, got himself an Acro bike as well. He's going to grab a Mysterious Treasure, probably for next turn. And uh, he's just going to pass it over now for Brent, and we'll see how his hand has played out. Yeah, so Brent is starting off with that Jirachi, one of the most popular cards from a Sun and Moon team up. It's a real difference maker with that stellar wish ability. allows you to look at the top five cards of your deck, take a trainer card, and just put it into your hand. And then Jirachi is asleep after that, but you can use a skateboard to uh, retreat that Jirachi, and it can retreat while it's asleep. So an easy two-card combo, and it really improves consistency in your deck. This non-GX Pokemon lets you find the trainer cards you need, and it's just an excellent supporting card in almost every deck. Yeah, lots of decks can consider that small sort of package of a number of Jirachis and then switching and a skateboard-style cards, trying to, you know, you really don't mind about that asleep for, for the most part. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we're going to see he did 
use a Nest Ball turn one here. He's going to have a scout through his deck. I think he used the Stellar Wish first, even though you know he could have used the Nest Ball to maybe thin an extra card out of his deck. He wanted to see what options he had first in order to see what he could search out, and now he gets the grim news that his Tapu Lele is priced as well, because we saw him get a Mysterious Treasure. I don't know if he has any other supporters in his hand right now, so this could be awkward for Brent. That's a fair point, yeah. We'll have to see how he plays out the rest of his turn. Uh, yeah, this Jirachi is a, another throwback card to the uh, the old Jirachi with the Wishing Star Poke Power back mm -hmm. in the day. Uh, the, the the sleep used to be more annoying because you yeah. couldn't use the power if Jirachi was asleep, but now we are in the era of abilities. So even if Jirachi does stay asleep between both turns, you can use uh, Stellar Wish. So. A little bit of an upgrade over the previous one. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. And uh, we are going to see Brent. He's having to Mysterious Treasure for a Malamar. It looks like he's actually supporterless right now. He only has Ace Roller in his oh hand. No. So had he used the Nest Ball first, he could have seen that there was no Tapu Lele in his deck and then had a more informed decision of the Stellar Wish. But, you know, it's one of those things where he's just been caught cold a little bit because of some awkward prize cards. Indeed, that's going to hurt quite a bit. Even the second Jirachi was prized, so... Mm -hmm. Can't even <laughs> nope. go for another Jirachi with the with the first nest ball. Uh, so yeah, this is not a good situation to be in for Brent. He actually plays Switch just because he doesn't want to lose his Jirachi because he knows I need to get a supporter, otherwise I'm going to lose this game. Yeah, it makes sense to me. He has to try and protect that because that's the only way, other than just top decking out, he needs to give himself more options. Connor now with the information of what deck he's playing against, he can start to continue to build up his board. He's also going to be using Mysterious Treasure here, and he's going to grab himself the Tapu Lele. Yeah, his is not priced. No, <laughs> it's right there for him, and he needed it too because his hand was also just full of energy cards. He's... Debating whether or not he wants to get a manual attachment in first, but he's choosing not to. It's an interesting one because it really does depend on what he draws into. He could have manually attached to the active and then been digging for Malamars, or he could have attached to the bench and be digging for switch or escape boards. So he's pretty much giving himself the option for both right now. Yeah, that's always the awkward situation you put yourself in with these Malamar decks because Psychic Recharge can only attach energy to a benched Pokemon. But it looks like uh, he's got a pretty good six cards mm -hmm. off of this Cynthia. And this is kind of the perfect situation you hope for with the Malamar deck. You're trying to get Malamar out on the second turn, charge up an attacker, and just keep attacking every turn for the rest of the game. Of an Acrobike that can discard his second Giratina. It's always great to get those into the discard pile, similar to Psychic Energies, because of that Distortion Door ability, being able to bring it back straight onto the board. Connor's also eyeing up a Viridian Forest, one of the other new cards that is introduced into Ultra Necrozma. One of the cards that really brings this deck towards the top tier in many people's eyes. It's a very popular deck today, and uh, it allows you to discard any card from your hand and search your deck for a basic energy card. And when you're playing a combination of psychic energies and metal energies, it just makes a lot of sense to be playing it in this list. Yeah, it's another card that fits perfectly into a Malamar deck. I mean, even if you already have a Psychic Energy in your hand, you can just discard it so that you can uh, put it in the discard for Malamar Psychic Recharge and then search up another energy. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice little engine, and like you said, really helps you find that metal energy so you can attack with Ultra Necrozma because that was one of the biggest weaknesses of this deck. Sometimes you would set up completely. You'd be like, turn two, I got three Malamar out. Get like four psychic energy on my Ultra Necrozma, but I never found a medal, so I pass. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that's a big piece of the puzzle that you're always trying to look for. Brent's drawn into another Inke now, but as Connor was not able to go on all cylinders, he wasn't able to attack an Inke, so Brent's now having to use uh, Connor's Viridian Forest to discard his top deck for turn, which was an Inke, to grab himself a psychic energy. Maybe he's just going to retreat into Jirachi and try and go for another Stellar Wish here. Yeah, that was a huge miss for Connor. He was so close to getting a turn to attack and just kind of uh, taking a big lead in the game, putting a ton of pressure on Brent, but instead he had to pass. Yeah. And then putting the Viridian Forest in play allowed Brent to get an energy to retreat, which can now perhaps find him a supporter card with this Stellar Wish. But looks like <laughs> that's a Guzma. <laughs> that's pretty grim. That doesn't draw Brent. cards. Yeah, Connor actually had, because he was holding Ultra Ball, and we know he already has Psych Energy in his discard, he could have gone down to a zero card hand and right. just tried to tempo out on Brent. But looks like he was already so far ahead in board state, he just thinks that, yeah, it's fine not to take the prize this turn. But yeah, Brent whiffing again off the Stellar Wish is really awkward. The Jirachi is such a lifeline for this deck, <laughs> especially when your Tapu Lele is prized. Indeed. He's not doing the right stuff right now. 
Brent does have rescue stretcher in hand. Uh, he's probably going to save it just for when Jirachi mm -hmm. gets knocked out. He can use it again. This is not looking good for uh, for Brent at this point, but we're still in game one, and Connor still has not found a second psychic energy to attack with the Skiratina. So that's true. There's the Viridian Forest in play, so that, I don't that's think that's going to be too much of a problem. <laughs> oh, look at this hand already. Drawing all your Malamars. I mean, no supporter in hand, but he's at least got an Acrobike back up. Okay, yeah, the floodgates are open now. Yep. It's Double Malamar. Uh, his, his bench situation is a little odd. Mm -hmm. He really only has room for one attacking Pokemon at this point, which is not the biggest deal because you always have, if Giratina gets knocked out, you can always bring it right back and power it up. But uh, the bench is a little clogged right now with you know a bunch of Malamar, which you do want, but then Mars Shadow and Tapu Lele GX. Typically, you're hoping to play one of those in a game, not both, just because it takes up so much space. I think Connor commit energy cards to his Malamars here. I think it's just sort of protecting him as he's seen Brent grab the Guzma last turn. Yes. He just doesn't want to get slowed down by some stalling plays while Brent is really just trying to buy himself any turns possible. Yeah, it's a smart play. I mean, when you're this far ahead, you try to figure out ways that your opponent can come back and uh, one of the ways is, you know, your Malamar gets stuck in the active spot for a couple turns and your opponent buys time to set themselves up. This way, Connor prevents that line of play and just says, hey, I'm going to attack you with Giratina every turn. You better do something, otherwise you're just going to fall too far behind. And in mirror matches, we know that just getting ahead and staying ahead is fairly routine. The uh, Viridian Forest isn't going to get taken off the board at any time. They're both playing the stadium card, so they always have a frequent flow of energy cards. And we see Brent using that forest again to grab himself an energy to retreat his Jirachi. And finally, hey, hey. Relief for him. He does play supporters. <laughs> <laughs> he's able to uh, get a new fresh six cards here. As we say, he's pretty far behind right now. But um, he's already also retreated for turn. So it's going to take a lot for him to get another response attack. But at least he can start trying to develop his board here. Yeah, I mean, he's going to need to find two Malamar, like Giratina and an energy. And a switch. Uh, yeah, and, and a switch. <laughs> yeah, it's so a lot of cards. It needs to be an ideal six here. Not look ideal so far. Just find one Ultra Ball, but beyond that, it's just not looking good. It's really rough for Brent here. He's eyeing up the Ultra Ball, of course. At what point in this kind of a mirror match do you consider, like... I'm too far behind. I have to just concede and move on. Well, it's potentially this point here, <laughs> to be honest. I think, especially because uh, the games can go long in mirror matches. Oftentimes, it's a non-GX war where both people are knocking out Giratinas, then powering up their Giratina again and knocking right. them out. So naturally, even when players are you know, at full speed and doing all their things, it's just a lot of actions that happen turn by turn. So buying yourself enough time to uh, win game two and three has got to be playing on Brent's mind already here. We do see Ultra Necrozma GX, so Brent, desperation mode here, having to use this GX attacker, but uh, can't even power it up yet, just one Psychic Recharge. It's not looking good. It's not great for him, not <laughs> at all. We are seeing another great Acrobike from Connor. These have been fantastic for him. He is playing four copies, whereas Brent is actually choosing to play none. At the moment, it seems to be somewhat of a difference in their lists, and it's really helping Connor uh, throughout the game here to just continue that tempo that he's started so nicely on here. And uh, he doesn't need much else to do in his turn. Absolutely, yeah. You see that Ultra Necrozma GX on the screen. Uh, one of the big comeback attacks it can use is Sky Scorching Light GX. Puts six damage counters on all of your opponent's Pokemon. But in this current situation, it's just not going to be enough to bridge the gap. Uh, you can finish off that Marsh Shadow on the bench. Uh, if that Inkay ever evolves into Malamar, then there's really only one thing to go after. You see Sky Scorching Light GX be very good against those Lost March decks where you can like wipe out their entire board, but in this situation, it's not doing a ton. Yeah, it can be a really big card in the rear match. They're both playing Jirachis. Uh, Connor is playing that Marshadow, but it really does... It's defiant on how quickly you can get your Giratinas out in the first place. If you can use Distortion Door enough times, both of these players are running uh, two copies of Giratina to try and push those 90 hit point Malamars down to 60. And then the Sky Scorching Light does a lot of work. But because Brent's already sacrificed two prizes and now there's you know, a two prize GX attacker in the active, it feels like he's not gonna have enough time to get Giratina to pull him back into a Sky Scorching Light range. Right, and 
I believe he's already attached metal mm -hmm. energy for the turn. Yep. So he can photon geyser here for 100 damage, which does get the knockout and maybe start to come back here. And we, we do see that distortion door, as you were saying, setting up a couple damage counters on those Malamar. If he can <laughs> get three Giratina out and uh, get three damage counters on each of those Malamar, he could set up that big Sky Scorching Light GX at some point, but still looking a little out of reach, but Brent has finally stabilized and set up and starting to fight back. Yeah, and it has to be the line he goes for. When you've dropped the number of prize cards he has, it's really the only thing he can really look to do if he's ever going to pull back in a prize race, especially in a mirror match such as this. Connor, though, sat on a fantastic hand again. Lots of ball search options, and um, he's also got himself a lily that he's actually going to pitch here to just maybe grab another Malamar just so that he can fully recharge onto a Giratina that comes back. Or again, he has the option for Ultra Necrozma now, now that he's staring down Brent's one. Yep. He has plenty of options available here. Yeah, if you're Connor, I think you're just trying to figure out a game plan. How do I get my last four prizes here? I think ideally you would finish off the game by knocking out this Ultra Necrozma GX for two prizes. But in the meantime, I mean, can you play a couple of Guzma, knock out those Malamar, and then try to finish off the Ultra Necrozma later. I mean, what, what's the best order to go about this? Yeah, and exactly, he's just going to try and limit the amount of Malamars Brent has access to. While he's sat there with three, he's trying to deny Brent the, a bit, the um, option of being able to spam his own Giratinas and Ultra Necrozmas. So Connor identifying everything he needs to do to stay ahead here. Yep. And it uh, looks like he does get one of those Guzma out of his prize cards. So he's going to have a fresh supply of Guzma if he can just play those every turn. I mean, he's got the three Malamar out now, which is perfect. Uh, after you have three Malamar, every time your Giratina gets knocked out, it's just a perfect cycle. You bring back Giratina from the discard pile with Distortion Door. You tri uh, triple Psychic Recharge, put three energy on it, and then Shadow Impact every turn. Once you set this up, you can't really break the combo. They're going to get an attack every turn. Uh, that's really what he's relying on here. It's all he needs really to, you know, round out this game after going so far ahead. We're seeing Brent kick off his turn with a nest ball, trying to replenish those Malamars <laughs> so that he can do the same thing. Uh, we're going to see a third energy commitment to his active Giratina, and he's just going to fire off another Cynthia here. Right. And you do see the shadow impact with Giratina. It does force you to put four damage counters on one of your own Pokemon, which can be a pretty significant drawback in some certain matchups uh, against spread decks with Tapu Koko. That becomes painful very quickly. But in this kind of a matchup, you can really just put the four damage counters on Giratina itself because it's going to get knocked out in one hit anyway. Might as well just put the damage on itself. Yeah, seeing as though the Giratina already doing 130, and you know that Brent's priority is to be using as many non-GXs at this point in the game, and so that he can get more usage out of Distortion Door as well, you know that it's just going to be a Giratina fight from here on out. Brent does play Cynthia, gets a fresh hand of six cards, still finds himself behind two prize cards, and it's going to be tough for him to bridge that gap. Uh, we do have one Tapu Lele GX on Connor's side that could be targeted at some point for a two-prize knockout, but beyond that, it's just going to be tough, especially because Brent has already put down his own GX. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, he's really far behind right now. He's been able to pitch one of his own Viridians via Viridian Forest. <laughs> it's one of the uh, best things you can do in mirror match situations. There are so many cards that are just not that relevant in mirror matches, so just having this frequent option to discard a card, even just improving cards like Lily that are already in your deck. This is why the Viridian Forest is so strong. Even just minus one from your hand can be really powerful at times, or just getting rid of excess cards that you don't need in situations. So it's really a stellar card for this deck. We are going to see Brent get his one Psychic Recharge off and uh, all he can really do here from now is just announce the Giratina attack. <laughs> Seen a lot of those already. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's that's really, because they're both just able to revive themselves so often, it really is just a war of attrition between <laughs> these Giratinas a lot of the time. But Connor's just happy to see this war at the moment. He's the one that's sort of asking the questions simply by being ahead. Yep. Brent can't be content with just using this Giratina war. He's going to have to try and find himself an alternate path here. Yeah, I think he's just kind of hoping that Connor either can't find a way to retreat his active because you do need to get Giratina back in the active spot. Currently, he doesn't have a skateboard on a Pokemon that could retreat for free. Um, so if 
Connor has no energy left in his deck, can't find a switch or a skateboard or Guzma. I mean, it seems very unlikely mm -hmm. to have none of these, but uh, I guess it's technically possible. So Brent's going to play out this turn. But here we do see Connor going for the Ultra Necrozma GX. It's like he's going to try to go for a big swing here. And uh, Viridian Forest to grab himself that metal energy out of his deck, the one remaining. He only plays uh, two copies as well as a beast energy. So he's really thin on the amount of energy cards that he plays. But he's got all the Malamars. He's going to be able to do a big knockout on the Ultra Necrozma here. Yeah, it looks like he has decided to just try to get this game over with as quickly as possible. Triple Psychic Recharge onto his Ultra Necrozma GX. And plays Guzma to go after Brent's Ultra Necrozma GX. And there we do see Photon Geyser for more than enough damage. Getting the knockout, going down to one prize card. And now Brent finds himself down three prizes. It's How can extra he possibly rough. come back from this? <laughs> yeah, it's extra rough because his own Giratina wasn't knocked out. And yeah. for his own win condition to play out, he needed the Giratina to get knocked out. He needed to double Distortion Door and then use a Sky Scorching Light to take maybe three prize cards off Connor's board all at once. But now that the Giratina stayed on the board, Connor's just gone down to one prize card. He's got so many options now to just take the win, and Brent's really looking on his last legs here for game one. Yeah, and this is where putting the four damage counters on your own Giratina actually can backfire, because mm. now it only has 80 HP remaining, so it just takes one Psychic Energy from Photon Geyser, and the game is over. Uh, so Brent almost has to find a way to knock out this Ultra Necrozma this turn, find another one of his own, get the knockout that way, yeah. but that still just doesn't seem like it's going to win him the game. Still does feel a little far behind. If he somehow is able to knock out the Ultra Necrozma and then knock out the Tapu Lele, that's like the only route he has if Connor's not able to respond yep. on Ultra Necrozma. That seems to be his only route. And you can see Brent now, he's just eyeing up the Ultra Necrozma. He knows this is his last chance saloon really here, but instead he's going to pick up the Giratina. He has more discarding options here, so maybe he will go for a Sky Scorching Light play this turn. Oh, he does. To yeah, so he gets to Ultra Ball the Giratina into the discard pile. Uh, it just seems like he has to go for a knockout on the active mm. this turn. Yeah. And anything else seems like it's going to be a losing play. And he does have Choice Band in his hand, so he can attach that Metal Energy. If he can get the second Malamar, he can Photon Geyser, hit for 210, take down Ultra Necrozma, and then it will put pressure on Connor to have some way to finish off one last Pokemon for the win. And we saw Connor, he went down to a zero card hand last turn. The only card the only card in his hand right now, or the two cards in his hand, are from taking those prize cards. So he's limited on the amount of options he has available to him. Okay, does Brent find a Malamar here to pull off this knockout and keep yep. himself in the game? He's got himself a mysterious treasure. That's good enough for him. All right. So this game will continue. And we do know Connor's last prize card is Guzma. Uh, he had one more in his prize cards, but it is the top left card, and he did not take it off of those two prizes. So currently has Cynthia and Erica's Hospitality in hand, but not Guzma. So he's still going to have to find some way to pull off a knockout this turn, and it might not be automatic. Uh, he would need to find some combination of, like, Ultra Necrozma, um a switch, and then probably his beast energy as well, because he's out of metal energy. So yeah. this might not uh, be as locked up as it would appear. And Brent may even be able to get something like his Tapu Lele off his own prize cards to get himself yeah. some sort of Guzma for his own win condition next turn. So it is, he's brought it down to this one one turn clock for Connor now. He does get Tapu Lele GX wow. out of the prizes, so can Connor pull this off? It's a huge Cynthia now. Connor going aggressive with his own Ultra Necrozma. Seems to be a little awkward at this spot. When he was so far ahead, he's put himself down to this one-turn clock, and as you said, he can't use Viridian Forest anymore to find metal energies. It has to be the beast energy at this point. All right, so he needs to find some way to switch. He needs to find an Ultra Necrozma, and he needs to find that beast energy. Otherwise, Brent's going to have a chance to win on the next turn in a game that seemed all but lost for... Almost 20 minutes at this point. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really incredible comeback from Brent here. It looks like there's no energy options for Connor. He does play, like we say, the really thin amount of energy cards. He just plays six psychic energies, two Ugh. metal energies, and one beast energy. And in this very spot, it seems to be very awkward. And you can see Brent now, he's shaking in his chair. He knows that he's so close to winning this game now. 
Yeah, and you can think all the way back to the beginning of the game on the first turn where Connor debated putting a metal energy onto his Giratina, mm -hmm. and he ultimately decided to attach the metal energy to it. And now if he had that in his deck instead, he would be winning this game right here, but he only plays those two metal energy. He's completely exhausted his resources, and it looks like Brent might steal this game. Wow, what an incredible turn of events, to be honest. We're going to see he's got Malamar options, but wow, he's going into his... Oh, he's trying to attach to his own Tapu Lele here. Okay, so this is this is something you could think about. Uh, if your opponent has Guzma, they win. Mm -hmm. So if you promote Tapu Lele GX, yep. you force your opponent to have Switch instead of Guzma, and, you, of course, you can't search for that switch, uh, as where you can wonder tag for Guzma. So Connor's just going to say, okay, if you have switch, you win. But uh, uh, I'm going to force you to have switch, not Guzma. Brent straight away puts down his own Tapu Lele. does eye up the Guzma. He has two prize cards away. We're going to see the escape board. Can oh, the there's switch? the switch. Okay, that's going to be the game-winning switch for Brent. Double psychic recharge. And wow. wow, Brent Tunnison makes a big comeback here. What a way to kick off the Oceania International Championships. That is huge. I mean, he was just <laughs> doing nothing for the first two or three turns, but he was able to just get that one final standoff with an Ultra Necrozma that survived an attack. Connor going down to that zero card hand size sort of opened up that option for him to see that line to just hope at that point when Connor had already played a lot of Guzma earlier on in the game. So he played to his outs there, Brent, and he was able to steal a win. Yeah, you have to think back to that turn where Connor decided to get aggressive, play down his own Ultra Necrozma mm -hmm. and Guzma for Brent's. Uh, you have to wonder, I mean, did he need to do that? It kind of mm -hmm. opened the door for Brent to get those two last GX knockouts in a row, take four prize cards in two turns and make that full comeback. You know, maybe if he had just attacked with Giratina once yep. again, On gone down to two yeah. prizes instead... Maybe he would have been in a winning position, but uh, Brent, you got to hand it to him. He's stuck in there. Uh, he did not give up at all, and he earned that win, Joe. <laughs> he worked hard for that yeah. win. His uh, rescue stretcher on Jirachi, retreating his Inkes two times just to try and dig for any sort of supporter after prizing his Tapu Lele as well. Uh, just really on that knife edge, but he was able to do just enough to maintain his board state in order to carry on attacking with his Giratinas and eventually he was able to make the breakthrough with that alternate Necrozma GX. Yeah, now we've had this uh, ongoing story where players from the Oceania region have never actually made the top eight at the Oceania International <laughs> Championships. Not a single one. And perhaps Brent could be the first one to break that sad trend for this region. That is a sad trend. <laughs> but, you know, he's no stranger to international glory in getting into other top eights so yeah. if anyone's going to do it he's going to be one of the highest players on your list of the Oceania uh, players here today and uh, we get to see Connor kick off with a couple in K on his side of the field he's also putting the Ultra Necrozma straight down here as he's staring <laughs> down Brent's own one it always feels like if there's someone else with GX's on the board you can put your GX's on the board <laughs> and that's pretty much the standoff that these guys have in mirror matches and you can see Connor now he's going to do his first deck search here He's got himself in that Viridian Forest straight away. He can again pitch a Psychic Energy. It's the perfect card to throw away. Just getting energy for energy is exactly what you need a lot of the time with these early turns for Malamar. Yeah, and Ultra Necrozma GX is a terrible starting Pokemon for Brent. Last game, uh, he went second, but he at least started with that Jirachi. That's uh, a perfect starting Pokemon. Ultra Necrozma is way worse. Two retreat cost. Uh, really no way to attack quickly. You can attack on turn two, but this is that situation where you really have that sick feeling in your stomach where you know your opponent's probably going to drop Marshadow let loose and you're going to be in a bad spot and you're going to be hoping for some really good four cards. And we saw in game one, Connor was not afraid to slam the let loose early. So you've got to be thinking that if he has access to it, he'll try and do the same strategy oh. again. Wow. Not there for him, though. Plays Lily, draws up to eight cards, and plays zero of them. Wow. I mean, he's just got chock full of energy cards. It looks like what he's drawn into. He has Malamar for next turn. But he doesn't even play that many energy. <laughs> no. He only plays, what, the nine energy yeah. cards total? And he drew into three of them off wow. of the Lily there. Very Brent's unfortunate for Connor. Uh, now Brent's probably going to breathe in a sigh of relief. Like, really? 
No let loose? Oh, yeah. All right, we, we'll take those. <laughs> That's huge for him. While he's able to pitch his own Giratina with the Viridian Forest, get a first scout of his own deck here to see what's prized and what's not. One interesting card that we saw in his prize cards was the um, the Ace of Roller, which could yeah. be an interesting tech card in a matchup like this, especially if it does come down to a Sky Scorching Light uh, turn here or there. You can surprise your opponent. He didn't see it in game one, Connor, so he's not necessarily playing around it. It's yeah. certainly not a standard card to see in many Ultra Necrozma lists, so it could have a good surprise factor in this game at some point. So Brent does have to Ultra Ball for Tapu Lele GX, so now he has two different Pokemon GX on the field, so this game will probably have a much different pace than the first one where we were trading Giratina back and forth. Now the heavy hitters, the GXs are out, and we're going to see two prize swings a little more often. Yeah, it's just through no fault of his own, just having to start with the Ultra Necrozma and then also having no other supporter option. He is going to be able to get himself a nice six-card Lily here, though, to try and get more Inkays onto that board and get some extra psych energy in the discard pile as well. It looks like he's drawn into a pretty nice hand here. He's got himself Malamar for next turn, more energies that he can put into the discard pile with his Ultra Ball for more Inkays. Looks like he can't complain too much here. Looks like he does have Ultra Ball in hand. Um, the question is, do you want to leave your Ultra Necrozma active? I think he has a switch in hand. Um, it is reasonably difficult to knock out. Uh, it takes actually three Psychic Energy for Photon Geyser to knock out and opposing Ultra Necrozma GX, assuming there's no Choice Band or Beast Energy or anything like that. And uh, if you switch into something else, it's much easier to knock out. So it's a question of, do you leave it out there? Because it actually is pretty tough to knock out. Or do you switch into something else and try not to get it damaged? Yeah, he got away with it at the end of last game, just keeping it out there. It wasn't dealt with, and he was able to uh, get his own value. So it seems like it might be Brent's best choice here, as he does pass it over to Connor. He's All picked right. himself up an Ultra Ball now, and it's going to be, be nice energies in the discard. Yeah, and this will be a big turn for Connor if he can find uh, the two Malamar and a switch. He can blow this game wide open, get a turn two knockout on that Ultra Necrozma GX, take a two prize card lead, and put, really put Brent on the back foot. So we'll see if he can pull that off. In the first game, he was very close to getting a turn two attack off, but just missed barely. Ready using Ultra Ball to grab one Malamar. I did see a switch in his hand as well, so oh he's boy. really not that far away. He also has at least a Cynthia, if not a second Malamar, already in his hand. But, uh, oh, wow, it looks like he's already got one. He's got the dream turn, Ooh. too, here. Yeah, this is, this is what you're playing for when you're playing Malamar. Turn two, three Psychic Energy on your Ultra Necrozma, plus a Metal Energy. Photon Geyser for a, a, a lot of damage. <laughs> and there we go. It's going to be a turn two... Two prize knockout, and he gets to reload his hand with Lily for five. Yep. Can't ask for much more. That's really excellent for him. Again, he sees Brent put down the second GX Pokemon, so he feels comfortable going for that slog of GX versus GX for the entire game. He's able to get himself another Inke onto the board. He's going to Acrobike once, eyeing up Guzma and a second Acrobike if he wants to dig even further into his deck, which when he's supporterless, it doesn't feel like a bad shout right now. He's also got himself more options for <laughs> Inke's and Mysterious Treasure. In his hand, he's eyeing up. Uh, he's got another Viridian Forest in his <laughs> hand as well, so he has some good discardable options. And he is, in fact, going to put the Inke into the discard pile here. Yeah, it just it seems like you're probably not going to need more than three Malamar in this game, mm -hmm. especially being this far ahead at this point. So there we do see the first knockout from Connor, taking down Brant's Ultra Necrozma GX with that Photon Geyser, and Brant is responding pretty quickly with two Malamar of his own. And it's, see. it was an extra important knockout because it was the beast energy that yes. was taken off the board. So if Brent is going to get a response, it does require him to find choice bands. One, one thing that's different between Brent and Connor's builds is that Brent is actually playing choice bands, so the option's available to him. But it looks like he's going down the Giratina Ooh. route, switching up the style again here. Oh, this is an excellent turn for Brent. Gets this Giratina powered up, gets a Cynthia. It's not a bad response. It's, yeah, really, uh, everything's guaranteed for him. Again, he gets that reload after the fact. He's starting to get those distortion doors on the board. This time, it's a lot earlier in the game. He can maybe hope to get the distortion door into Sky Scorching Light uh, off. But again, it feels like Connor's going to be the one trying to Guzma as much as possible, uh, especially because his own Ultra Necrozma isn't going to be getting knocked out this turn. All right, so we do see Brent 
getting six cards off of this Cynthia. Might be trying to find another Inke so we can get that third Malamar out. It really feels like once you get the third one out, everything is going perfectly. Uh, two is like the everything's fine number. Like I can pull off attacks mm -hmm. if I draw like my switching cards and my energy. But when, once you have three out, you feel really good. Uh, yeah, it feels very safe then because even you're fairly safeguarded against the likes of Guzma as well at that point. Yeah. So we can see him prioritizing this by treasuring away an Ultra Ball here. And uh, he actually doesn't have any other Inkes, but he's going to... Oh, he does have another Inke. Okay, in deck, yeah. But he chose instead to get the Giratina just so he could get rid of it with Viridian Forest and get himself a Psych Energy to his hand. He might have even more Search in his hand, really, if he uh, has the option to. But it's interesting that he chose not to go for an Inke there. Yeah, you can see this could be a, a long-term play for Brent. Uh, there are two Ultra Necrozma GX on the board. And if Brent can hit each of them once with Shadow Impact and then uh, use Distortion Door two more times to put <laughs> two more damage counters on both those Malamar, we could see him set up for the board wipe, the six yep. prize Sky Scorching Light GX. You have to wonder, is that his plan here? Because uh, it's really not that far out of reach. No, it's not far at all. And again, he's chosen to put the damage counters on the active, which gives Connor a really easy option of taking a knockout, just has to manual attach, and there's already a Viridian Forest in play. So he's just saying, yeah, please do take my Giratinas out. You're going to help me towards my own strategy of Distortion Door. And um, he's basically just tempting Connor in. <laughs> yeah. If he has no other option, just take this Giratina out and let me keep reloading. And yeah, let's not forget, Connor did discard a Guzma from one mm -hmm. of those Acro bikes. So he has down one Guzma here. Another in his hand for this turn. So he could be trying to dodge and weave and maybe take out more Malamars this turn. It yeah, feels like you never want to deal with opposing Giratinas when you can help it. Yeah, if I'm Connor, I'm going, uh oh, I, I do not want to walk into the sky scorching light. Uh, I am avoiding knocking out this Giratina at all costs. I'm trying to Guzma every turn. Guzma for the Tapu Lele GX, go down to two prizes. Guzma for the Malamar. Don't let my opponent get this distortion door off with this Giratina. Because uh, if they do, you might be looking at a six prize turn. Seeing him debating over what he wants to search out with his mysterious treasure here. There's a few options for him. He's eyeing up Giratina potentially, or just that third Malamar getting it straight onto the board. His hand is full of ball search cards, so he <laughs> might be getting the Giratina just to dump it to search for more Pokemon after the fact. Um, there's also, if he is going to go for a Guzma knockout option, maybe knock out the uh, Malamar or the Jirachi and try and combine it with a, a Let Loose, which is still available to him. That might be the best route for him here. We are going to see him straight away forest away the Giratina that he's just searched out. Yeah, so we might be looking at some weird lines of play here from both players. It does look like Brent is on the plan of going for the big Sky Scorching Light GX. At least that's what it would appear. Hmm. Uh, one strange way to counter that is using Tapu Lele GX's GX attack, Tapu Cure GX, if you can fully heal both of your Ultra Necrozma GX, you can stop that plan. So there's going to be a lot of counterplay back and forth reacting to what the other player is doing. Seems to me that Connor is going to forego the Guzma this turn by manually attaching to the active, unless he wants to get an extra <laughs> Malamar into play. He's just going to continue, after using a Distortion Door, continue to attach to his backup Ultra Necrozma at least once with a Psychic Recharge. It's a really interesting line for him because he has also committed so many GXs to this board. And he's having to knock out a Giratina. It does work towards Brent's plan quite nicely here. But he does keep up the tempo with another, another prize card at least. Yeah, that's, that's a dangerous play from Connor because he's now filled his bench. Uh, that Tapu Lele GX play is now gone because he can't play it down. So now Brent, if he has Guzma this turn, uh, he can get back Giratina with Distortion Door. You know, put those damage counters on those Malamar. Uh, Guzma out the other Ultra Necrozma. Shadow Impact for 130. And then it just sets up for the Sky Scorching Light GX for the win. So it looks like Connor is all but walked into this line of play. We'll see if Brent can pull it off, though. He's picked up a Guzma from his Stellar Wish as well. This could be exactly what he's after. This lets him hit into that Ultra Necrozma and set it up pretty nicely. He's definitely debating it here. <laughs> 
And, it, I mean, there is a bit of a risk to it. You don't know if your opponent is playing a card like Max Potion or mm. the Ace Rolla that's in Brent's deck. That's the thing, especially when it's in your own deck. Yeah. You have, to, you have to consider that other people have thought about putting it in themselves. But at the same time, you have to think, can I win if I don't go for this line of play? Uh, looks like Connor can just win in two turns if he takes a knockout on the active and then Guzma's out top of Lele GX to finish off the game. So if you're thinking, I only have two more turns left to play this game, you got to go for the line of play that gives you a chance to win. That's right. So he's going to eventually go ahead and grab that Guzma. We've got to think that he's going to try and distortion door again, pick off or try to get that preliminary damage on the Ultra Necrozma. He's got it all set up for him. It's just how nicely his hand plays out to get the Ultra Necrozma for next turn as well. But dealing with all the Malamars at once, even if you're not taking all six prize cards in one turn, which would be incredible scenes, even just dealing with two Malamars could be a big play. But instead, he's going to put one damage counter on the other Ultra Necrozma here. Huh. A pretty interesting one. He has choice bands available to him, but it feels much more long-term than the, than the other line that we've been discussing. Yeah, I guess we'll find out what his plans are. I thought for sure we were going to see the, the six prize play mm -hmm. here. Uh, I'm not sure what the one damage counter on the Ultra Necrozma gains you. I suppose it makes it easier for your own Ultra Necrozma mm -hmm. to hit for 180 and uh, get the knockout there. But yeah, this just feels like it's uh, going to be 10 damage off of going for a big win here. Still going to choose to Guzma this Ultra Necrozma up. Buying up Choice Band if he wants to. He is going to commit it to the active. That means he's going to be hitting 160 now with his Shadow Impact attack. He still chooses to keep damaging his own Giratina. He's offering it up. Never wants to let Connor have free Sky Scorching Light targets. Yep. Um, but he's also just not taking prize cards. So <laughs> the Sky Scorching Light is never available for, <laughs> uh, for Connor at the moment. All right. So this will be an exciting finish to this game, too. Uh, if Connor is able to win game number two, you got to think there's just not enough time left to finish out the series. And we'll probably end up with a tie here, but Brent did have a masterful comeback in the first game. We'll see if he can do it once again. Down by three prize cards, but there is a lot of damage on Connor's board. It feels like it's just coming to that. He's had those few turns of setup. He's just ready for the floodgates to open and take prize after prize after prize over these next two or three turns. But Connor, he's only got three himself, and he's going to be going down to one prize card with this Guzma play on Tapu Lele GX here. I feel like I've seen this game before, Joe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Connor's going to go down to one prize card after this knockout, and we'll see if Brent can stop him from getting the last one. It's like the difference this time is he has much more of a hand to play with for the following turn. And, uh, we are just going to see the 180 damage. Photon Geyser, knockout. Ooh, and the Switch is in his prize cards. In the first game, it was the Guzma. Now it's the <laughs> Switch. Such important cards. When you're removing all the energies off yourself with a Photon Geyser, you need to try and reset uh, energy cards, and it's normally Malamar from the bench. So these switching options are huge for closing out the game here. Brent brings up his Jirachi. He's got a Stellar Wish to try and dig a little bit harder through his deck. So if Brent finds his Ace Arola off of this five cards, he can actually still pull off the double distortion door. Oh, actually, no, he can't anymore because the Giratina wasn't knocked out, so <clears throat> that's not an option anymore. Yeah, it just feels like if he would have put that one damage counter on that other Malamar, we could be seeing game over here. Uh, he's actually got Marshadow GX in his hand. Uh, Ultra Necrozma is in the discard pile. He would just be announcing Sky Scorching oh. Light GX, take six prize cards, and he would be 1-0 here at the o Oceania International Championships. But now, we'll see what he's going to go for here. Stretch it back a Tapu Lele GX here. That already comes with its own sort of headache because he no longer has space for any more Distortion Door Sky Scorching Light plays in the future. Obviously, he's... Uh, Connors only has one prize card left, so it's not a huge deal that uh, it's a GX Pokemon on the board at this point. It's just the physical space that it takes up as he's eyeing up a Guzma here. He could perhaps Guzma out Giratina and then Sky Scorching Light and, you know, take four prize cards here. No, he's just going to concede. Uh, too bad. All right, we are going to go to a game three here in our first round. Connor does clean up game number two. 
And we're going to have about seven minutes to finish off this third game. We'll see if we can make it happen. Such an intricate matchup when you're both trying to play for the immediate turn that's in front of you, whilst also trying to look towards Sky Scorching Light, not letting your opponent have the option, whilst also trying to make yours as good as, as possible. So some of these players are trying to strike that balance of immediate pressure versus set up for the long game. Yeah. And it felt like Brent was very close to getting that balance just right, but he wasn't quite able to close that game there. Yep. Uh, it, is a, it is a very complicated matchup, and you know this is a nerve-wracking situation to be in. I don't know if you've ever... I mean, Joe, I think you have been on the stage before <laughs> yeah. uh, with that headset on, and it's, it can be very nerve-wracking. It can really shake, shake you to your bones, and uh, things that seem like very simple plays are all of a sudden not because there's so much pressure. Yeah, and in a round one situation where you're staring down another very notable player with some great results behind them already. Uh, they've both been in the same top eight of an international <laughs> championships before, playing yeah. the same deck then as well as today. <laughs> um, so it seems like they're on similar wavelengths normally when they're going to these tournaments. Yeah. And um, we're going to see Connor kicking off with a Jirachi in his hand. That seems to be his opener. Brent has the option of uh, going first here, obviously having conceded in game two. And it feels to me, with the amount of time left, it's going to have to be a very quick game if we're going to see a conclusion here. Indeed. And we do see both players starting off with Jirachi here in game number three of our first round. I almost forgot Connor played Jirachi because this is the first yeah. time I've seen it. <laughs> it's, really, it's one of these things where, because Sky Scorching Light's always a threat, sometimes you don't want to put down these 70 hit point Pokemon because it's extra prize cards that they can offer up. But right. it's just such a lifeline. We saw how Brent was able to use it in game one to just dig deeper to find himself a supporter. And uh, sometimes you just want to you just want to get it down. And especially with the amount of time left, it feels like a Sky Scorching Light is a million miles away. So you may as well just try and get as many cards as possible in this situation. Yeah, especially with time winding down, you want to try to get a turn two attack if possible. And uh, Jirachi is going to help you do that. feels like one of the only ways you're going to win from this situation is just your opponent has a slow start and you just run them over before anything can happen. So looks like Brent is off to a great start. Uh, we see two Inke down on the board already. He's used Stellar Wish. Uh, he only found a switch, but discarded it right away to Ultra Ball, and he's going to get the nice Lily to eight, the full eight cards. Full eight cards with a Viridian Forest as well for extra discard. He's got even more ball search everywhere here, so he can really fill out his board as best as possible and start getting some attackers powered up as well for turn two. Usually just, Giratina. Just a perfect start. I think he even has a skateboard in his hand, so turn two, he's almost guaranteed to get a, an attack off, and... This is the start Brent has been looking for. You know, he really stumbled in the first two <laughs> games, and it was pretty impressive that he was able yeah. to put up the fight that he did, even winning one of those games. But uh, now that he's got his perfect start, he might not have the time to actually capitalize on it. It's going to commit the escape board, knowing that Connor does play let loose. It doesn't feel like a bad decision at all. He's yeah. going to get the three in case down. No manual attachment to any attacker, but it seems like it's a very strong, strong turn for him still. Yeah, and he didn't. Uh, he hasn't seen Field Blower in any of the games, so might as well just play it down. Field Blower is one of those cards that seem to be out of favor now that we've seen Prism Star Stadium cards become more and more relevant, especially with Pikachu and Zekrom GX running Thunder Mountain, as well as Zapdos Jirachi base builds. Some new decks coming out from Team Up it yep. kind of dissuades you from playing Field Blower because you'd much rather have physical stadiums to bounce these sorts of high power spike cards that you need to deal with. So it feels kind of like an out of favor card right now. So it's much more safe to play around a card that you have seen in the Let Loose than one that you haven't seen in the first two games. Definitely, yeah. So a decent start here for Connor as well. Gets a Mysterious Treasure, Psychic Energy in the discard pile, gets an escape board of his own. And we'll see him, looks like Lily, but not for quite as many cards. No, especially when he wants to this time be a lot more conservative with his Ultra Necrozma. In both these other games, he's just slammed them onto the board and just started attaching energies to them. This time, Brent, with no GXs on his side of the field, he feels a lot more hesitant to just put himself in that sort of disadvantageous spot here. Instead, he picks up an Ultra Ball, and he might start to commit energy to another non-GX instead. Yeah, so we see Ultra Ball from Connor. Uh, if you're Connor... What are you going for here? Are you setting up another Inke, a Giratina, or are you just uh, slamming down a Marsh Shadow and saying let loose? <laughs> I think the Marsh Shadow is pretty 
pretty crazy. He's instead just going to guarantee himself an attachment on an attacker that he knows, save himself Ultra Ball for a Malamar next turn, it looks like. That's always not the worst option. Again, just trying to be as safe as possible, really, as it goes over to Brent as we see some sleep wars going on <laughs> with the Jirachis. Uh, just a big whiff there here. And it's interesting that Brent, a lot of the times he's taken the option to Stellar Wish first when he could have statistically better chances by thinning for these Pokemon and even use Viridian Forest first. But right. it's always one of those things, it's similar to trade, where you want to see the amount of options that you have in your hand first before going down the optimal line. So although it's not necessarily mathematically correct to go for these plays, uh, it gave him options for different decisions and he could have played his hand entirely differently with right. the ball search that he had. So uh, there's always a good debate there between Stellar Wish first or after, and it seems to have worked out for him. He's got himself uh, three yeah. Malamars and a big Lily. <laughs> Triple Malamar on the second turn. Does he have a Pokemon to attack with, though? As that okay. distortion He does have Giratina. Giratina in his discard pile. So, yeah, this is perfect. Turn two, Shadow Impact, knockout on this Jirachi. Not a bad way to start this third game. And again, continuing that route, please take my Giratina. <laughs> I really want you to. He just knows this matchup inside and out. Putting uh, putting damage on your Malamars is a big no-go. Damage on the Jirachi could be punished as well later down the line. So he just wants to keep throwing uh, Giratina in Connor's face and make him deal with them turn after turn because there's that long game potential all the time. As we're going to see, Viridian Forest dumping an Ultra Ball. Oh, he's actually used the Ultra Ball to find the Malamar. I didn't see what he was pitching with the Ultra Ball here. I didn't either. <laughs> I thought ah, he was using he Viridian Forest. Yeah, yeah, he is pitching. And then <laughs> oh, he's okay, going to get go. grabbed. Okay. Yeah. He's jumping some steps, but he knows what's going <laughs> on here. Here comes Malamar, now with the extra psychic energy in the discard to boot. He's going to be able to power up his Ultra Necrozma. And he may be paying retreat on an Inke here with a Metal Energy. And we saw how detrimental that was in Game 1 when he only plays a couple copies. Yep, but that is time in the round. You see our timer up there has hit all zeros. That means this round, the time is up. We get three additional turns. So the way it's going to work is Connor is turn zero, and then Brent will get one turn, Connor will get the second turn, and then Brent will get the third turn. And then if there is no winner at the end of that, this will be a tie. And uh, it certainly looks like we are heading down that road. Yeah, unless there's some crazy sky scorching light play <laughs> that takes a bunch of prize cards yeah but you can even deny that just by not taking prizes on your own side and <laughs> then just resigning both of you to a tie but it feels like that's the way this game is going to end up yeah certainly does seem that way um not much else we can say here uh, i mean this was an excellent first round matchup we had some great games back and forth both players uh you know they they earned the win that they got and I'm sure this is a deck we're going to see a lot of this weekend. We see Malamar all over the place. With uh, that Viridian Forest now making it a little easier to play Ultra Necrozma GX. And Ultra Necrozma GX is one of the few things that can deal with those tag teams very well. It can get to 240 and higher damage and knock out those three prize Pokemon in a single attack. Yeah, prior to Team Up, it seemed to be the less popular build compared to sort of psychic toolbox Malamar decks. But now the extra safety net of Viridian Forest and Jirachi, in addition to the fact that you can take easier three prize knockouts, it just makes sense that Ultra Necrozma is going to be a more popular play, especially when Sky Scorching Light can help out against some non-GX matchups. The deck can be very versatile, and it just seems to have answers to a good amount of decks right now. And yep. uh, both of these players agree, and they're going to be piloting it all day. <laughs> and they've had the awkward situation of just having talented round one opponent opponents that have both known what to do in mirror match situations. Connor's going to just attach to his active easily enough to knock out uh, Brent's Giratina. Going through the motions these players right now just to make sure that they can, uh, they're can they doing all they can do in these last few turns of time here. Yep, so we will see Cynthia from Connor and then we'll see a Photon Geyser for the knockout. He does get his second Malamar and a uh, Another NK down on the board, so this uh, this probably would have been a nice back and forth game, but it uh, looks like we are heading for a round one tie, which is unfortunate, but that is the way it is sometimes. Um, yeah, looking forward, I, I do think we'll see plenty of Ultra Necrozma GX, 
plenty of Malamar, but uh, we've heard a lot of buzz about Pikachu and Zekrom GX. Uh, we've seen a lot of Zapdos decks popping up in the field. A lot of players from the U.S. deciding to play that Zapdos. And uh, there's always, you know, somehow it, it becomes forgotten. Zorark GX, <laughs> the card that has dominated standard and expanded for, I mean, well over a year at this point. And we'll see if it can continue to have success here now that these tag team Pokemon are out and the, uh, the landscape has changed quite a bit. That's always what's so interesting about international events like these where the sets just dropped. We've yep. only got Japanese tournament results to look at. So people wanting to take risks with these new decks, hoping that they put enough testing time in against all the other players and matchups so that they feel confident in it. Or do they want to go with old reliable Zoroark and old reliable Malamar? There's going to be a good amount of players on both sides of the coin um, today. So we're going to have a good variety of decks all weekend. We're going to see that's the last turn, and they do resign, and it's going to be a tie here. <laughs> yep, a mirror match between two previous top eight competitors at international championships ends in a tie. Uh, I mean, pretty much perfect mirrors of each other. And what more can you say? Both players won a game. They end up with a tie, and that is going to be our conclusion for the first round here at the Oceania International Championships. Not a bad way to start off. Um, it's seeing one of these decks that is kind of resurging. I mean, Malamar has been a pretty successful deck throughout the standard format this season, but now has perhaps stepped it up a little bit with the inclusion of that Viridian Forest, uh, the Jirachi to give you a little bit more consistency and the ability to hit very high numbers of damage. So seems like a solid choice for this weekend, but uh, as always, Malamar decks do have their flaws. You know, you have the 90 HP Pokemon that can always be a liability, um, and it can be a little clunky sometimes if you don't draw the cards in the right order, but there's no denying how strong it can be when everything works. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And it was interesting to see, despite it being a mirror match, how different their directions were with the deck. They yeah. both had Jirachi, but Connor was very low on energy cards and lots of acrobikes just to try and cycle through his deck as hard as possible. Brent going just more down the ball search route to make sure he gets as many Malamars out as possible right. just to give himself energy cards throughout the game. And also have that Acerola never really came into play <laughs> because he wasn't drawing well enough <laughs> for it to come out. Yeah. But that could catch some people off guard today. So it's an interesting tech inclusion for him, for sure. Definitely. Yeah, and interesting to me that Brent not playing Let Loose Mars Shadow. Mm. Uh, it just seems like a card that's thrown into basically every deck at this point. It's just so powerful to go first, play out as many cards as you can, and let loose your opponent and say, all right, good luck. But uh, Brent has decided, nah, not worth it. I'll just set myself up and play a fair game. I think, <laughs> yeah, it's one of those things where it's board space, which is probably his yeah. biggest argument for not playing both Jirachi and Marshadow, but having no hand disruption for the opponent really does hurt you sometimes because they can set up a game plan and you physically can't interact with their hand and stop them going for it. So it's going to be interesting to see how Let Loose does sort of take over this tournament <laughs> as it seems to be popping up in pretty much all